In this video, we'll be covering Visio services in SharePoint 2013. My name is Tavis Lovell, and I'm a senior SharePoint BI consultant with Rackspace. If you need to reach out to me, you can find me at tavis.lovell at rackspace.com, on my blog at www.tavislovell.com, or on Twitter at Tavis Lovell. In this video, we're going to talk about what Visio services is used for, we'll step through the prerequisites you'll need in order to complete this tutorial, and finally, we'll walk through creating our own Visio drawing, tying it to data, and deploying it to SharePoint. In its simplest form, Visio services allows users to view Visio drawings uploaded to SharePoint directly inside of their browser. This enables users to view Visio drawings even if they don't have Microsoft Visio installed on their local machine. In terms of BI, Visio drawings uploaded to SharePoint can act as a report or dashboard by displaying data related to the drawing. You will need to have a license for SharePoint Enterprise as well as a license for Visio Professional or Premium in order to leverage Visio services in your environment. In order to successfully complete this tutorial, you'll need to have the following prerequisites. A SharePoint 2013 environment with Visio services already configured. This includes setting up and associating an unattended service account. This configuration will not be covered in this video. However, it is covered in depth in the Business Intelligence chapter of the Rocks publication titled Professional SharePoint 2013 Administration. Secondly, you'll need to have a SQL Server database available and the appropriate permissions needed to read data and create database views inside of the database. Last but not least, you'll need to have Visio 2013 Professional or Premium installed in order to create the Visio drawing. Before we start the tutorial, let's take a quick look at what our goal is. In this example, we want to create a simple diagram that pulls data from SQL Server and shows the average time it takes in order to move through various stages of our order fulfillment process. We also want to visually indicate how that time compares to our target time by changing the color of the arrows in our diagram to either red, yellow, or green. Now that we've got our goal in mind, let's build this diagram from the ground up. The first thing we we'll want to do here is open up SQL Server Management Studio. To do that, we'll go to the Start button, and then All Programs, the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 folder, and then SQL Server Management Studio. And we'll need to enter in some information here, uh, the server name, which in my case is just SQL, and then click Connect. And that should allow us to view all of our databases. Now I've created a view here ahead of time that I'm going to open up. And you can download this view at www.rackspace.com slash SharePoint dash BI. Let's just take a quick look at what it returns here. Now this is all data that's not actually coming from any tables, it's just data that I've uh, coded directly into the view here. And we're only seeing two rows returned, uh, one with a time type of packaging and one with a time type of shipping. And then we've got associated average time and hours and target time and hours for each row. So you can run this view in any database you want to. I'm going to go ahead and run it in the AdventureWorks database that we've been working with. So we'll go up here to the available databases, select AdventureWorks DW 2012, and then I'll click in the window with the script and just click the Execute button. We can see that's been created successfully, and we can test that by uh, trying to select from the view or by navigating directly to the view here. And we see it right there. So we're all done in here. Uh, next we'll wanna open up Visio 2013. So I'll go ahead and close this. And we'll go to Start, All Programs, Microsoft Office 2013, and then Visio 2013. And we're just gonna create a basic diagram. So we'll click on that. Click Create, and we're going to start off by just adding some shapes to the canvas here. So we'll go to More Shapes, and then Business, 
and then business process, and then we're going to go down to workflow diagram shapes. Uh, we're going to look for the packaging shape, the purchasing shape, and then the shipping shape. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger here. That should be just about right. Move this one over a little. And that's uh, the basics of our report here. Now we need to add the arrows and have them attached to data. So the first thing we're going to do is connect to our database view. We'll do that by going up to the data tab, clicking on link data to shapes. We'll select Microsoft SQL Server database, then click next and enter our server name, which again in my case is just SQL. Select the database that has the data we want, which is AdventureWorks DW2012. And select our view, which is VW underscore Visio test data. And then click next. Now on this screen, we do want to click on authentication settings. And we want to switch this to none. And what this will do is use the secure store account we've set up for Visio services once we upload the workbook to SharePoint. And we'll click OK. And then finish. And I've created this before, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Um, and then for the connection we want to use, we'll accept the default, click Next. For the data we want to bring in, we're just going to leave it as all data for both of these, and then click Next. And then Next again, and then Finish. And now we should see our two rows of data down here in the data window. So the next thing we'll want to do is find an arrow to attach this data to. We'll do that by going up to search. And we'll type in arrow here. Once our search results come back, we'll scroll down a little bit and look for the 45 degree single arrow. You'll want to click on that and then go down to your data window select the packaging row and drag it onto your canvas. And I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit by holding down control and using my mouse wheel. The first thing we'll want to do is turn this arrow around by grabbing the corner of it and just dragging. Now our objectives for this arrow uh, is to have the data show up above the arrow and we want to control the color of this arrow based on some of the data. So to implement those changes we'll want to right click on the arrow, go to data and then edit data graphic. And the first thing we'll want to change is the default position. We'll change the horizontal to be center and the vertical to be above shape. And then click apply and we can see those changes have already happened on our canvas. Next we'll want to go ahead and add the average time in hours. So we'll go up to the new item button, click that. For data field we will select average time in hours and for displayed as we will select text. Click OK and apply again and once again we can see that change has already happened. And finally we want to control the color of our arrow based on the average time in hours. So we're going to add one more new item, select average time in hours, and then for displayed as, we're going to select color by value. For the coloring method, we're going to select each color represents a range of values, and then we're going to alter these ranges. So the first value will add a and possibly high value of 1000. And then for the other ranges, we'll do 6, 
4.1, 4, and 0. And then we're just going to go ahead and delete this fourth range. For the colors, if the average time in hours is far above our target, we want that color to be red. And then if it's close, we want it to be yellow. And finally, if it's at or below our target value, we want the color to be green. And we'll go ahead and click OK and apply. And we can see that our arrow has turned yellow uh, because the average time in hours is just slightly above our targeted time in hours. Next we'll click OK and then we're going to drag this arrow back up to the rest of the drawing here. Maybe adjust the size a little bit. And that's it for our first arrow. Uh, to create the second arrow, we'll want to go down to our data window again, make sure we still have 45 degree single selected, and drag the shipping arrow onto the canvas, turn it around just like last time, and you'll see that the formatting changes we made to the first arrow uh, have also been applied to the second arrow, which is kind of nice. I'll drag it over to its position. And we do want to change some of the ranges here. So we will right click on the arrow, go to data, and edit data graphic again. For the apply changes to radio buttons, we want to change this to only selected shapes. Otherwise, the changes we make here will be reflected on both of these arrows. And that's not what we want. We'll go up to average time in hours, again edit item, and this time the ranges are a little bit different. We'll do 1000 again, but uh, cap that at 26 and 25.9, 24.1, and 0. Then click OK and apply and then OK again. And we can see this time our arrow is green because our average time in hours is 22.1 which is slightly lower than the target time of 24. All that's left to do is go ahead and save this and upload it to SharePoint. So we will go up to File and Save As. Select the desktop and I've already named it Visio 2013 Video Demo. We'll click Save. And then we want to open up our SharePoint document library. Click on the Files tab Upload document, browse, select our document, click open and then OK. And to view our document we simply click on it. Up at the top you can see it's asking uh, if we want to allow the data refresh. We'll go ahead and click allow refresh and it went out and got any new data. Of course there is no data since we were using a hard coded view but if there were we would see it reflected here. Once your drawing is uploaded to SharePoint, uh, you do get to do quite a bit of zooming here, uh, pretty far in and far out, so you could have really complex documents that you have amounts of data tied to and still be able to view it pretty easily. You can also have multiple pages over here on the right, and we can view the shape info for anything that has data tied to it. So for arrow, for instance, if we click on shape info, we will see that we could have had a hyperlink that maybe takes us to a report and we're also able to view our shape data. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up for our Visio tutorial. Once again, my name is Tavis Lovell, and thanks for watching.